it is possible for you to be very close to, to us, it would be helpful, I think. So I, I begin with the, they begin with their presentation, our um, colleagues from the, from the churches in the Netherlands. Mar Margriet Goskar, I'm a reverend since uh, nearly 50 years, ecumenically involved and uh, always interested in uh, ordination and uh, this uh, love for the ordination uh, started with uh, the BEM document for me. I got my dissertation on that and uh, so I was very much involved and I was also involved in the Leuenberg uh, documents about ministry so I am very interested to be here and to hear from you all. Good day, my name is Romy Nauta. I'm from the Protestant Church in the Netherlands. I always worked in uh, first in theological ed education in Latin America, and later on in the international ministry of our church. And I'm here because our church is looking for ways to uh, make changes in the ordained uh, ministry uh, to allow uh, people from with a variety of backgrounds and also to encourage more cooperation between pastors and people who are working and serving in our communities. So I'm interested to hear if there are other churches similar and ha have similar problems and similar ways looking for solutions. I am Verena Salvisberg and I'm a Swiss pastor and uh, I'm the president of the Conference of European Pastors. And in this function, I meet um, many pastors, many ministers of uh, Europe from many countries. And uh, it's uh, very interesting to discuss uh, with them this uh, subject. My name is Hans Jacob Schiebler. I'm a reformed reverend in uh, Switzerland. I'm a retired uh, reverend, but I'm still working because we have not enough uh, succeeders <laughs> in our profession. And uh, when I heard the uh, Leuenberg, I, uh, it is in the canton uh, Barcelona, where I uh, had my second uh, work, and then I was often on in the Leuenberg. Thank you. So I am also a member of the committee of the Swiss Pastor Society. My name is Martin Hauser. I'm a long-term uh, uh, Swiss pastor as well, um, and further on, uh, professor in uh, different uh, universities. I'm a retired professor now. Um, and uh, involved uh, continuously in the Society of Swiss Pastors. My habilitation thesis at that time was about the ministry, the ministry uh, in, in Zwingli, in the Zwingli tradition. So I'm very interest, interested to uh, listen to you and to learn about the situation of the ministry uh, right now. Hello, I am Siep Lanser. I'm a reverend in the Protestant Church of the Netherlands since <laughs> 40 years. Last year I retired, but still active and hope I can do the work for many years. Sonia Heinz, an Anglican priest in the church in the province of the West Indies. Um, one of the first women to be ordained in 1994. I'm Daniel Duros. Um, I'm also a retired pastor. But uh, as Hans, Peter, uh, Hans Jakob, I <coughs> worked uh, two years longer than uh, uh, that I was retired because we have a lot of pastors in Switzerland as uh, in other, other countries. I was also in the council of the uh, Swiss church, but I luckily left before the crisis began. Continue. I'm here the operator for the video, so you know everything will be online afterwards and the sound will be 
incredible good because here you have a lot of noise and the recording will take out all the noise. So I'm also a retired minister. Just in February I retired and uh, doing this and that and um, we'll see what will come. Hello everybody, I'm Jennifer. I come from uh, Evangelical Lutheran Church of Hong Kong. I'm also a pastor. I'm graduation from 1997. So I'm starting in a sabbatical year from September 1st. Yeah, so I joined this uh, uh, assembly. Uh, it's a dedicate uh, from Hong Kong Christian Council. Hello, good morning. I am Jose Hernandez, uh, an Spaniard, a Roman Catholic priest. I was professor at the faculty of Granada for systematic theology and now serving as parish priest in the periphery of Milan. I'm very interested in knowing your experience as pastors. Kind greetings to everyone. Uh, Karoj Gaspar is my name uh, from the Romanian uh, Reformed Church, uh, which means uh, the Hungarian-speaking uh, Reformed Church uh, in Romania. And it's, uh, it's an honor to be here as a delegate and uh, feeling at home at, at this, this corner. And it's, I'm also very interested about the past and the present. And being a pastor, it's, 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 it's a task what's what the future holds. So it's an honor to be here. I guess that our discussion will be very, very rich. And uh, I um, um, welcome in a very special way even uh, our colleague from Romania. Unfortunately, our Orthodox priest or bishop uh, cannot be here in this morning. Um, I am also, also very happy to learn that we have a Roman Catholic priest here in order to um, guarantee this uh, ecumenical frame of uh, also of this meeting. Now, uh, in this morning, uh, I suggest that we will speak about our ministry, our ministries, uh, not about, let us say, uh, about the ministries of the lay woman, lay uh, um, lay man uh, within the church. Um, even uh, Martin Luther uh, uh, made this very uh, important distinction between the calling of the of the followers of Christ, of the, the believers, and the the pastors. And uh, we have to take very much into account uh, the, this calling of everybody uh, within our churches. Uh, this is very important and it's also a call. But now in this morning we, we are speaking about the, the specific ministry of, of pastors, of reverence uh, within our churches and uh, including even if possible, uh, theoretically, not practically, not totally practically, even the uh, sister churches, the Roman Catholic Church, and um, uh, also the, the Orthodox Church. Uh, the last question we will um, uh, deal with uh, will be about the ecumenical perspective of all our uh, discussion. But at the very beginning, now I would uh, invite you to meditate uh, the questions I proposed, but this is not mandatory, this is also a roadmap. I put these questions in order to help you a little bit to uh, identify our ministry with, uh, upon some um, uh, possible basis we, we could imagine. Uh, the, the first question I put to our uh, invited uh, persons here uh, if they can comment, and then to all of you is, what are for me the Bible, bi <coughs> biblical and, excuse me, and generally historical points of reference for my ministry? Well, for me, I learned from the ecumenical uh, uh, 
being an ecumenical theologian, I learned the, the, uh, het belang, the importance of uh, ordination. So ordination f for me is uh, very important. And in our church, uh, since uh, a year or two, the word of ordination is also used. It was never used. The, the, it, it was a word like affirmment or, or affirmment or something like that. But we didn't use the word uh, ordination. And I'm very happy that the, we are using this uh, in this moment. Uh, it's new for us. And for the biblical reference, the importance is uh, the, the vocation of God. That God, the, my, my ordination is a vocation from God. When I was uh, coming to for my studies, it was not allowed for me to, I could be vocated, but I couldn't be a ministry because I was in advance before the ordination was allowed. But in, the, in a few years it was possible, so I was very happy. But it's not, not also the ordination, the, the, the vocation from God, but also the calling of the church. But this is the second thing. And the third for the ordination and the calling is that it is uh, for the joy of the community. It's not for myself, but that the people in the church are very happy that we can serve in a way that we can help them with our ministry. Thank you. The same church, uh, uh, I think we just uh, accepted a, a report in our synod that is uh, uh, named uh, Called by Christ, and this is an effort affirmation of the, the calling uh, by Christ as the first uh, most important part of the ordained uh, ministry. Um, from my point of view, I am not an ordained minister, although I am a theologian and I'm serving the church already for more than 30 years. Um, I think the importance for me in the Bible is the variety and diversity because in the Bible, the, the image of the church is an image of variety and also of different callings. And my hope for our church is that we can accept also uh, different callings to, and accept them as a gift to the, to the church. Uh, uh, and I, I support the idea that the ordination, the ordained ministry is very important and it is uh, uh, not the same as the calling of the of everybody uh, uh, or every every member of the church. That's that's clear, but the ordained ministry can be, in my view, be much more open and and accepting people from different gifts and backgrounds than we have now in our church. Thank you a lot. Um, it would be interesting to know what are the texts in the New Testament, let us say, um, which um, uh, give the basis for your considerations. Additionally to what was said right now, uh, have you also Bible texts um, concerning uh, your choice and your um, vision of, of things? But afterwards. Uh, I would like to add to you um, that the beginning you said um, we don't want to discuss about other calls, we want to discuss about uh, the ordination and I think it's not possible to do so without um, discuss the calling of the others. Um, and especially in uh, nowadays it's um, uh, we, we, um, we see, we, we hear, we find uh, uh, more and more the importance of this um, diversity and, and uh, um, that's uh, just what I want to add to you. And uh, the ordination or my, if my base is um, biblical, my ordination was very a service without love, without, uh, it was uh, very, uh <laughs> it has no, um, for me it's no, um, not important at all. 
but uh, to be called by Jesus, to be called like uh, the disciples, this is what uh, for me is um, why I do that, what I do. I want to say something to uh, the meaning of uh, the Bible for me. I'm uh, what we call a, a liberal uh, referent. For me, the Bible book uh, didn't fall from the heaven. It's a document of uh, writing men mostly, uh, and it's literature. And I, I have to deal with this like with liter literature. So I would say the Bible explain the experience we make, the life we have, and on the other side, life, my experience, the experience of uh, my uh, members of, of uh, the parish, uh, explain the Bible book. So it's a uh, I cannot say it in English, I don't know the uh, word, but in, in uh, German we call it gegenseitige Erschließung. And that's very important for me. Uh, and the, the truth of the, the Bible is in, in this uh, gegenseitige Erschließung. And then is another thing now, uh, yes, that the Bible book uh, refers to uh, God, and uh, that's another thing in, 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 uh, in the life of many people. There are powers, uh, other people, other uh, men or politicians, and this meaning of what that means God, it's that, uh, yes, what we mean with justice, that everybody has the same uh, rights before each other, and uh, these two points, that uh, justice is the very important uh, uh, theme, and on the other side is love. And these two points, I, I think that's the most important, what the Bible book uh, tells us. So, thank you a lot. Now, uh, I identify two questions which were not really answered right now uh, in um, <coughs> in connection with the first question I put, uh, which you can read here. Uh, but excuse me. Why is your first question asking us for biblical references? Why do you want us to say that the ordained ministry is not in the Bible, which is the f which is the case? No, no, no. But um, <coughs> traditionally, uh, um, Protestant and even uh, Reformed churches are <coughs> uh, referred to, to, to the to Bible texts, to texts of the Bible. And so, um, uh, no, no, but, but my, my idea is the following one. Firstly, but coming back to the identification of the specific ministry, uh, it was very interesting to listen to you uh, when you said that, um, that the calling is uh, a large one and the ministry is all, all only one of the, of the callings. I, I totally agree with that. Uh, but uh, given the framework we have here, I, I identified it at the very beginning, is now to, to see what is the specific aspect of our uh, ministry of reverence of, of pastors and so on. Um, but uh, 
you asserted that you have asserted right now that we cannot uh, devise the two things and we have to uh, to um, have the perspective all the time of the two coming together uh, within the church now okay we can uh, uh, go further on with this um, problematic but uh, concerning the, the Bible uh, back, uh, background of the whole thing is uh, that um, you know uh, in, the, in the text of the New Testament you fi find the uh, ministry of the apostles, the ministry of the teachers, the ministry of the prophets, and further on the ministry of the presbyters, the ministry of episcopes, and we have to um, identify ourselves somewhere uh, where, 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 and how is the relationship between us, as reformed, uh, ordinated uh, pastors, for instance, and these ministries, uh, wi which are proposed in the in the Bible? I, from my viewpoint, it's very natural to to um, to have the um, intention to see the the relationship between the between, between the two, if you can identify it. That was my question. I, I'm, not, I'm not obliged you and I right now to, to give the answers of all, of all these things. But um, I would uh, enlarge a, a little bit our um, discussion now and uh, give the opportunity to our um, uh, assistants to make their uh, um, worthy contribution to our discussion, please. Can you please tell me first if it's okay for me to speak as an Anglican? I, as an Anglican, because I'm getting the impression the conversation is around... We are uh, here in an ecumenical framework, okay. dear colleague. Okay, thank you. So, my ordination was a historic one in 1994, but need to be seen in the context of ecumenical. In the Caribbean, the Methodists and the Moravians had already settled the question about ordination of women just a couple of years before that. And in the context of the Anglican Church, in 1943, a Chinese woman, Florence Lee T. Moore, had gone, uh, been ordained out of necessity because of what was happening in Hong Kong at that time. And then in 1977, the Episcopal Church ordained, and then it took a while for the Caribbean Church. In terms of my own ordination, I remain convinced as my sisters that it has been be also biblical and historical roots, but it is a call from God to use the gifts that God has given me. So it's good to hear the voices of um, European um, voices, I call, um, to be speaking to it. So thank you for giving me the opportunity. I welcome other contributions very well. I was ordained 45 years ago, and I still remember the days before the ordination in which the biblical text of the election, the choice, the calling of Peter, James, and the other fishermen, uh, and the during some days, I had the, the feelings of Peter. I am not worthy. I am not able. And then the confirmation. It is my election. I choose. And I said, you as to catch men or people, men and women, <laughs> and catching people from the sea, from the waters, is not just like a fish which is taken away. It dies. It's saving, like uh, the rescue of many who try to cross the sea. And I feel very much identified with, with several texts of uh, the Apostle Paul. One of them is related to your own experience. I am servant of your joy. Servant Dieter Euler Freude. Because uh, our joy is based 
of the Lord and is uh, fed by the word, the gospel, the sacraments, the communion, fraternity, sorry. and so to serve this joy, I feel like a vocation and a mission that is a, a grace. I feel still unworthy, but it is a grace, and I feel an instrument of this grace. Uh, for me, it was a. <coughs> it was uh, for a long time. I'm I'm just uh, 13 years uh, old, uh, uh, an ord ordained pastor, uh, and uh, I did have uh, uh, through all these years a uh, chance to to do something else, and uh, I didn't, and um, um, this is what what proves that uh, ordination and vocation are sometimes uh, synonyms. Um, which means, uh, of course, ordination is the approval of the church, what God wants, and vocation is, is what, what uh, uh, I feel uh, to follow what God wants. It's, it's the same, the same uh, target. Um, my, uh, my personal and our church's uh, perspective is a, bit, is a bit conservative. Don't take uh, the word conservative as negative. Um, but uh, without the Bible, um, y you cannot you, you cannot bind the human and the divine, so the sacred and the the everyday uh, 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 profane. So without without the Bible, uh, we we are. I don't know if if uh, we we can uh, uh, find uh, uh, or justify uh, God's word in the present world. So this is my thought. Of course, you need the Bible, but you need, of course, the present uh, uh, communication of God. Can I add something? In my understanding, if you talk about the ordination, you talk about how you understand scripture. And from my point of view, the question is, do you allow yourself to understand the scripture in a historical and depending on the context of the historical time. And if you do so, you will come up with the idea that women and men are called to serve. And if you don't, you will end up at a different place. And so actually, I think you deal with the scripture, the understanding of scripture when you speak about ordination. Unfortunately or fortunately, there will be <coughs> many non, uh, not answered questions um, and we will meditate uh, continuously the discussion, uh, very interesting discussion we have right now and very profound discussion as well. Um, I, uh, given the hour, I would uh, suggest that we now go further to the um, next question, one of the next questions. Yes, the first one, uh, which you can see here. Um, I, I think there is a general, uh, general uh, understanding and uh, agreement <coughs> in the sense that uh, our world is rapidly changing, uh, the different contexts in which, in, in, in which we are living are also uh, rapidly uh, changing. And if we are a pastor or a priest, we will be confronted with this reality of a changing and changed society. And the <coughs> demands of our society towards our ministries uh, become uh, probably different. Uh, there is a variety of, of demands um, we may not imagine for the, for the past. So in the present situation, um, what changes for our ministry and how can I deal with this reality? That's the next uh, 
the next question. I, I think that everyone is concerned by, by this reality. It, it, evidently, uh, the, the, <coughs> the background or the context uh, may, may, may differ from one place to the other. I feel a bit uncomfortable because it looks as if the Bible is not important for me. I couldn't hear you good, but it, I heard that the Bible was not important for me. Or so That's not true. The Bible is very important. In that way, I'm, if you say conservative, then I am also conservative. It was only you asked for references. And I don't know them uh, ahead, but there are, of course, it is in the Bible, uh, not the ministry as such, as an ordained ministry. You cannot find in the Bible, there's an ecumenical agreement, but that, uh, for ordin that the vocation to, to serve our Lord is in the Bible, it's completely clear to me. So I, I, I wanted to say that. And then your second question, what, what's on now? The ministry is changing a lot because um, in, in our country, uh, we are, and I think in the Swiss it's the same, the church is going down and we have a loss of pastors and ministers, we have a loss of quality, we have a loss of knowledge, we have a loss of churchgoers, and, and we have to, to find ourselves how we should deal with that. And I think you can say something to that. Thank you. No, I think it's true that our context uh, is, is changing and I suppose it's in other European countries, perhaps uh, similar. And what we see is that it also asks of the pastor to, to, to change with that. Our church is no longer a church that is self-evident that it is there. The church needs to prove that it's a, a valuable option, a life option for people. So you need pastors who are able to relate to people who are not raised in the Christian faith and to, 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 to uh, present uh, Christ's love in new ways to people who are not raised with what we call the language of Canaan, the people who are uh, raised in the faith from many years, from, from, from family-wise, that is not lo no longer happening in the Netherlands. So it, it, it demands different passes with different gifts. And so we are trying to find ways also to open up the ordained ministry for people who have gifts in the missionary field, uh, who are able to relate to youth and not put uh, the knowledge of Greek, Latin, and Hebrew as the first qualification to be a pastor, but to, to put their vocation and their gifts to relate to people on the first place. Uh, I, would say, I would say something about uh, the changement. When I was a young student in the 68 movement and then a theologian and then a pastor referent, in, in, in those times we felt like we are a part of this movement. And I remember when you say Leuenberg, I, I had a professor, uh, Max Geiger, maybe you know the name, and he wrote in the newspaper articles about this uh, Christian part of this movement. And now I'm, I'm an old pastor and I think when we say uh, we have changements, yes, but when we, we look on the, the history, changement, that's, that's normal, but, but not normal is that now the church is not even a part of this movement and that's my question how how we can get it again and we are the most of us uh, more than 50 years old and that's that's under the other pro now there is a young lady she's laughing yes please say something where are the young people interesting in church and in 
yeah, social and political movements. So we will open the, the discussion. Huh? I, I think I was misunderstood. Um, I did not say Bible is not important. I said without Bible, church is not a church anymore. So without, without the basics, we can love each other, we can do heal each other, but, but without God's word, we are just a social service. And that's not, so Bible, it is vital. Last remark about that chapter, if you would agree. Um, <coughs> the Bible for a Reformed Church is fundamental. Even if we cannot find the um, ordination um, procedures wi within the texts of the New Testament. This is a, a question, my colleague, uh, um, f from the systematical theology may confirm it. The, the, the ordination may be a question of the third, uh, of the second century uh, and, and, and further on. Uh, but uh, th given the fact that we have these initial ministries of, uh, of apostles, um, teachers and prophets, even the presbyters and the, the, the episcopes, uh, the bishops in the, in the New Testament, this is the very beginning. And in some way, uh, uh, all, all these things, in, in including even the ordination, uh, go uh, go together and uh, are the basis of, from my viewpoint, are the basis of our our, our own ministry. How exactly? That's another question. Uh, we have also to deal with the question: Why uh, Protestant churches are not totally together with the Roman Catholic churches? Because there was another understanding of the ministry, historically speaking, at a certain point in the 16th century and even before, but that are details, let us say. But we are, we are going back with all of, of us to this, to this root, to the, to the apostles in the, in the end. Um, so uh, we, we were involved in this discussion about the radical changes from time to time in, in our present societies. Now, um, if there are other voices about the identity of ministry, of ministers, within this changing uh, situation, please um, pro propose your, your um, aspects and uh, um, pro uh, consideration, considerations about that aspect. I must say that uh, I grew up as minister in a Catholic region and I was very well there as reformed pastor because I didn't that to port or support or build the society life. It was supported by the Catholic Church and now I went back to a reformed region and I'm quite happy also because the church is in some kind also liberated for to support the state and we can more focus on our own and our specific duty to speak about faith, to speak about ethics in a point of view of Christians and I think some kind, in some kind we are more free to to announce uh, the gospel than before. Well, in, in my experience, and I think in, in generally the Catholic Church, uh, priests uh, are uh, to promote, are called to promote the priesthood of all baptized. I think we have uh, we have had uh, 
an illness of macrocephaly, I call it so, so that the priest was uh, the only one who acts and the other are passive listeners and uh, this is a, an illness, a very uh, clerical ismus, no? And uh, we are now aware that we have to promote all the charisms, all the ministries in the community. This is a main task. And together with this, uh, to take care of harmony, unity, cooperation among all those charisms and ministries because it is very easy in these times of pluralism, of individualism in our culture, that uh, the personal charism are not uh, offered and put at the service of the community, but taken for own advantage or interest. So the priest has to take care of the communion, articulation of all these ministries and promoting uh, all uh, baptized in their uh, mission and dignity also. I'd like to come back to the point about the youth. Um, I'm actually not a youth, but uh, <laughs> I grew up uh, as a minister's daughter and I'm now doing a studies here in Switzerland uh, to become a social deacon. And what I've noticed over time when I did ministry, I was a children's ministry elder for years in an international church, have served in a local church as well. And what I noticed is that youth is not gone, but they don't go on the barricades as we used to do in way back in the 70s and 80s and 60s. I think they are now uh, revolutionized in different ways. They're on the internet everywhere. Uh, I share my studies with a group of young people who are uh, becoming ordained in whatever ministry, also pastors, but also deacons, uh, people who are involved in community building. And what you see there is a real growing uh, interest because these people, these young people, actually have to fight much more than I had growing up in a, you know, where church was self-evident uh, nowadays, it's not. So these young people are much more motivated. I see the, sale, uh, the same, I'm actually from the Netherlands. I also see that in the Netherlands uh, with some young groups, they're really, really motivated, so they're not gone. So there is a lot of hope that I actually see. And I learn so much from these young people, they're so go-getting, you know. They really want to go and move forward. And they do have to face a lot of changes in, in their cities, but also in the countryside, or even there in the Netherlands as well as here. Churches are emptying, you know, and Corona hasn't done a lot of good in that respect. So we still face a lot of challenges, but I also would like to say I hear a lot of hope. And what we also learn from a conference like this if you see four, uh, three to 4,000 people praying together, what a message that is for all of us. So I hope we can move us forward to that. And thank you for all your comments. Um, very interesting. Uh, if I, um, I am allowed to put one question back to you. Um, in the essence, what does it mean for the changing ministry, for the ministry within this change? I see I have to bite the bullet. I was hoping to avoid that kind of question. <laughs> it's actually, it's an exceeding difficult challenge. What I do say um, is communication is key here. How we communicate as Christians with each other and also outside of our comfort zones to be open. Um, I think, you know, uh, What's very important is to be aware of the other people's contacts in this respect. I think we learn every day from that. We'll, we have a lot of opportunities there through the internet. I think whereas a lot of people of my age see it as a, as a threat, I actually see it looking at my own kids who are now in their 20s uh, as a real great opportunity to open up 
to be free and to, you know, turn the evil to good, as it were. Um, what I mean with that, if you see what all's going on there, just take it back. You know, we as churches should be aware of what's going on. And then we have to work together much more um, with also other organizations in our communities. A lot of pastors are not like my father was full-time. In our church, we have three part-time uh, ministers, and, you know, that's a problem. They all have to coordinate. It's so difficult, you know, to find the time and the people, and it's all scattered, right, right now. Uh, the real world, even to my children, feels very diverse and scattered and sometimes confusing, and I think that's true for all of us. So we should be aware of that. That's something, but we can also turn it around and try to bring unity in a diverse and varied world. Shortly, we will come to the end of our very interesting discussion. Uh, this discussion may in some way uh, exist in continuation. I would propose to all of you, if you want, um, it's not mandatory, but uh, there could be some kind of exchange um, uh, and um, collect of, of collection of our email uh, addresses. So we could continue this discussion if it is wanted um, occasionally uh, with uh, each other. We do agree, all of us, I, I guess, that there is a very changed, changing situation. Our ministry, our ministries are changing. Now, uh, thinking about uh, our ecumenical context, we have to be um, aware of the... Unfortunately, we have not our Orthodox colleague here, but they are living in a more traditional way, their ministries, even if uh, <laughs> their societies also are rapidly changing. Um, given this fact and given the ecumenical context of this conference, how can we deal with the reality of the Protestant ministries, which are um, totally uh, integrated in this change. And uh, in, in front of other ministries, the Roman Catholic one even, and uh, the Orthodox one, uh, Anglicans are some kind of Protestants, <laughs> excuse me for the uh, expression. But uh, how can we go together further to, towards the future uh, from the viewpoint uh, uh, of, of our uh, ordained uh, ministries. I can um, say something about um, our uh, conference of European pastors and for me this is um, it's only Protestant uh, ministers but for me this is um, a source of, um, of joy of, um, of help uh, to come together and to discuss and to uh, share what we are uh, living in our countries and this is very very important for me. I would say we need a lot of prayer. I think we should pray for the churches, we should pray for the, or the, for the minister, for, for all the ministries, also for the ordained ministries, also for our church leadership because it's, it's very difficult to find new ways. And without the Spirit of God, we, we can do it, I think. So therefore, we should find each other, talk to each other, pray together. This is in this assembly. It's, it's um, the main place of the whole assembly is the prayer uh, tilt, uh, tent. And, and I think I am asking the people from from Africa and from Asia to pray for us because we think that we have to pray for them but I think Western Europe is really in need of prayer from f from all the world. Be 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 I only can affirm what, what uh, my colleague and friend already said that I think the churches at least let me speak from the Netherlands but I think in other parts of Europe it's the same really need the support and the prayer of the world communion of churches. Um, I think also for us it is very encouraging and also uplifting to be here present and to see that the spirit is moving 
around the world and that we may be part of that, although some parts of our churches are dying, in fact. So I really would ask for your prayers and also for your encouragement and your experience. I can understand this uh, focus on, on prayer, but uh, next week I, I have a worship uh, with the concern of uh, ora et labora. And uh, I have a man from the Heilser Army, the Salvation Army, and he had uh, this, pro uh, this protection, no, this uh, pro project, yes, a project of the clothes collection in, in Zurich from the uh, Ukrainian uh, refugees. And he will be my special guest. And my concern is to, to say, uh, I heard it sometimes and I find it very important, you have to pray equal, working and praying. That's what I mean. For me, it has been a, a blessing to have good friends who are pastors in Spain. Very good friends. I have understood, I have appreciated, I have felt as mine the life, the ministry of those past, these pastors. And my ecumenical vocation has been very much uh, uh, f uh, promoted by this friendship. Uh, I have shared the, the ordination of the first uh, woman as pastor in, in Granada, in South Spain. I was invited once uh, in Marburg, the ordination of think, 16 pastors. And it was one of my most beautiful experiences. So I would like to invite you to have good friends in other churches and share also their ministry as possible, because it is uh, very, very much a grace, a blessing, uh, this experience. I would think that ministry is, starts with listening, also listening to the needs of the time and what is needed in the society where we are church. And maybe it asks for new ways, even if this implies a certain break with tradition, so be it. Or even maybe a break with certain biblical texts. Well, I agree with Margriet that um, ministry is not found in scripture, but often we refer to the pastoral letters with a patriarchal structure. And maybe we have just have to say that's not helpful anymore. So let, let it aside. Be also critical about the own tradition and also critical about certain biblical texts. I, ha I have to thank every one of you for your participation. And once again, so I have to thank you very personally and also in the name of ecumenism. And we hope that this ecumenism will continue in, in the best way. Thank you a lot.
I have, I have to thank every one of you for your participation. And once again, so I have to thank you very personally and also in the name of ecumenism. And we hope that this ecumenism will continue in, in the best way. Thank you a lot.